This will be step six or tutorial six on our time lift Spring Boot application. And we are going to be setting up MySQL database at this time. In the previous one, tutorial five, we set up H2 database and we're able to access the H2 console as you can see right here. So in this case, we are now going to be setting up MySQL and it's the same procedure follows. We are going to modify the application.properties file. So this time we are going to comment out the configuration for H2 database because the two databases can actually not be running side by side on the same application. So I've commented them out and I'm going to enter the configuration for MySQL database as you can see in this place. So I don't recommend copying and pasting. I recommend typing it out yourself. <coughs> so this, in this case, the data source, the data source, the driver, the driver class, the class name for MySQL will be com.mysql.cj.jdbc.driver. So this is the data source uh, driver name or driver class name specified for MySQL. Now the password, password, so data source of password, okay, let me just write it. Data, uh, what is happening? Data source dot password is root. That is the password I use. The same username. I use the same username in the MySQL. We are going to do it together as well. Data source dot username. I use the same, uh, the same, uh, the same, uh, the same like the password to make it easier. So the next one is the data, data source URL. Data source. The URL for MySQL is a bit different from H2. So you say uh, JD, JDBC MySQL double slash localhost. And for it to work, you need a local instance of MySQL to be running on your machine. Student DB. So I want to use the same database name. So you have my website, you have student, but you can also use student if you want, but I like to use student DB. So you can actually change it to student DB. The next one is the auto update, DDL uh, auto, uh, that is this one, so update. So this means that if you make an update to this database, you actually, it will actually update the existing database. So initialization mode, initialization mode, initialization uh, mode, initialization mode should be always, right? So when the application starts running, it's going to initialize a new database. I'm going to save. Now we are going to head to MySQL and create a database called StudentDB. That's all, we're not creating any tables, just a database. And you forgive me for using, I will be using a command line to write, to create this database. It's going to be just one line of code. So let's go to MySQL. So MySQL, I'm going to use a command line because I think it's faster for me to use a command line. So let me just increase the font a bit so that you'll be able to, let me uh, increase the font to maybe 18 or something. Okay. So my password is root and just to create a database is just simple. Just say create database student DB. That's all. That's all you need to do. Enter and it creates a database for us. I'm going to exit. Make sure the name is correct. Fine. I'm going to exit it. Fine. So now we've uh, added MySQL supports and we've created and configured data source. Note that the data source configuration for H2 has been commented out. So for now we cannot test it because database has been created and we just created this configuration in properties file. We are going to see how it works when we when we see that MySQL or Hibernate or the Spring application is going to automatically create a table for us in the database. That's the beauty of it. The tables will be automatically created. So we are not going back to this database to go and start creating tables and table rows they will be automatically created for us. So at this point, you have completed uh, uh, step seven, and I'll go, I'm going to say thank you for, for being there, and also try to not give up, 
and let's keep doing it together. If you have challenges, leave it in the comment box and also subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button if you have not done so.